Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of ATP Ask the Pastor. I'm Pastor Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Today's question, dear Pastor, I had always understood that Lutherans believed in consubstantiation, but you clarified that Lutheran belief should be understood as a sacramental union, meaning that our Lord's body and blood are united with the bread and wine. Further, I believe sacramental union means that our Lord's body and blood are in, with, and under the bread and wine. Am I correct to understand that the bread and wine are vehicles of the body and blood of our Lord, but not completely changed into the body and blood of our Lord? Then at the end of the communion, there remains some of the body and blood of our Lord. Are they consumed, or do you keep some, i.e. the body, reserved for the homebound and the sick? Coming back to consubstantiation, would you kindly explain how that differs from sacramental union? All right, so... Uh, Nearly everybody who's not Lutheran believes that Lutherans believe in consubstantiation. It's commonly held uh, to mean that both bread and wine and Christ's true body and blood are simultaneously present in the Lord's Supper. Now, that is what Lutherans believe, but that's not what consubstantiation is. Now, what's consubstantiation? Well, the Christian Cyclopedia defines consubstantiation as being two possible errant beliefs about how Christ is present in the sacrament. It reads, View, falsely charged to Lutheranism, that bread and body form one substance, a third substance, in communion, similarly wine and blood. Or, that body and blood are present, like bread and wine, in a natural manner. Now, the first option for consubstantiation is that the bread uh, and Christ's body merge and form you know, one substance, a third new thing that is neither body nor bread. I've never heard anyone uh, use uh, consubstantiation to mean that in our day. The second option is the one that Lutherans are continually accused of, generally by the Reformed, namely that Christ's uh, true body and blood are present in, with, and under the bread and wine in a natural manner. Now, those words in a natural manner are the key to understanding why Lutherans outright reject consubstantiation. By natural manner, it means that Christ is present in a local or spatial way. To better understand this, uh, we need to review Christ's three modes of presence. Uh, so the first mode of presence, or the way that Christ can be present, uh, is called the comprehensible, or the bodily mode. Um, this was the way of being present that Christ used when he walked the earth during the days of his humiliation. Uh, his body vacated and occupied space. Uh, you know, this is the only mode of presence that you and I have. We can only take up, uh, we can only be in one place at one time, and we take up a certain amount of space. Uh, we are locally present. We are present right here. Now, to under, uh, or rather, so that's the first mode of presence, I should say, the, the comprehensible, the bodily mode. Uh, the second mode of presence, the formula of Concord calls the incomprehensible, spiritual mode, according to which he neither occupies nor vacates space, but penetrates all creatures wherever he pleases. That's in the Solid Declaration, uh, Article 8, Paragraph 100, if you're keeping up. So Christ can be present bodily, uh, but not in a way that occupies space. Uh, so the formula of Concord states in that very same paragraph, this mode he used when he rose from the dead, uh, when he rose from the closed and sealed sepulcher and passed through the closed door and in the bread and wine in the Lord's Supper uh, and as it is believed when he was born of his mother. So in this spiritual mode of presence, uh, Christ uh, is bodily present, he's physically present, but in such a way that he doesn't take up space. Um, now, the third mode of presence, then, uh, is the mode of presence by which uh, he is present to all things. Um, you know, all, all things are present to him because, as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, he fills all things. Um, but right now, we're concerned mostly with the difference between the first and the second mode of presence. So Lutherans teach that Christ is bodily present in, with, and under the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper, according to the second mode of presence. He's present in a supernatural, uh, in an incomprehensible way, but in a way that's still bodily. It's, it's still a corporeal physical presence. He's just not localized. 
He's not occupying space. Now, the reason that the Reformed uh, accuse us of, of consubstantiation or, or cannibalism, which we'll get to in a moment, is because the Reformed only believe in one mode of presence for Christ. Uh, so when the Reformed heard uh, that Christ is in, with, and under the bread and wine, what they hear is that Christ's body and blood are locally present. So it must therefore be enclosed uh, within the bread and wine, which we call impanation, or that Christ's body and blood are present in a natural way, uh, just as if my body and blood or your body and blood were present with bread, uh, so that it would be mixed together uh, or so that it could be seen under a microscope. Now, the denial of modes of presence, of other modes of presence for Christ, uh, led the Reformed to accuse Lutherans of what they call Capernaitic eating. Um, in John 6.52, when Jesus tells everyone, uh, he's speaking of his word, but he says, you know, unless you eat my body and you know, drink my flesh, you have no life in you. They say in John 6.52, uh, this is up in Capernaum, uh, which is why it's called Capernaitic eating. The unbelieving Jews ask, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So the Reformed, because they believe in only one mode of presence, they hear that we receive Christ's body and blood orally, and they accuse us of cannibalism. If Christ only had one mode of presence, then yeah, that would be the case. But he has more than one mode of presence. Christ can be present however he wants to be. You know, Christ is fully God. Uh, his divine and human natures are inseparable. Uh, and his human nature has been glorified uh, and receives all the majesty and power of the divine nature. And so this means that uh, he can be present in the elements in a non-local way. Now, this kind of local inclusion has always, always, always been rejected by Lutherans, even during the days of the Reformation itself. Uh, it was even rejected by Luther himself. Luther signed a document called the Wittenberg Concord in 1536, which expressly rejected any kind of local inclusion of Christ's body in the sacrament. And since then, Lutherans have adamantly rejected the term consubstantiation because it confuses the modes of presence and opens us up to the accusation of being cannibals. So, how is this different from what Lutherans believe, teach, and confess about Christ's presence? Well, Lutherans believe in what's called, like you said, the sacramental union. Uh, Christ's very body, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, suffered, buried, resurrected, and ascended, and seated at the right hand of God, is essentially, or substantially, present in the supper, though in a way that's invisible and incomprehensible to the human senses. That's what we mean when we say sacramental union. It's not a natural union, nor is it a mixture of the two into one, nor is it that both things are taking up space in the bread and wine so that Christ's body and blood can be empirically verified, like under a microscope. We receive the bread and wine in a natural way, that is, orally, and we receive Christ's true body and blood orally as well, but again, in an incomprehensible and invisible way. So consubstantiation attempts to answer the same question as transubstantiation. You know, and the question is, how is Christ present in the sacrament? In what way is Christ truly present? So transubstantiation goes too far by viewing the sacrament through the lens of Aristotle and his categories. Uh, consubstantiation either mingles or confuses the earthly and the heavenly elements into one, or it assumes that Christ is present in the supper just as he was present in the boat with the disciples on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, both transubstantiation and consubstantiation go beyond the scripture to explain a mystery that Christ doesn't explain when he says plainly, take, eat, this is my body, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament in Matthew 26. Lutherans simply take Christ at his word. Uh, the bread is simultaneously Christ's body that he offered for us on the cross. The wine is simultaneously his blood, which he shed for us upon the cross to atone for our sins. Uh, and he gives that body and blood to us in a sacramental, incomprehensible way. Uh, and he does the same then with his body and blood simply by the power of his word. Both the earthly and the heavenly elements are just simultaneously present, but not in a consubstantiation, not in an impanation, or any other way that would imply a local presence of Christ's body and blood. Now, finally, real quick at the end here, you asked about the reliquy, the elements that remain after everyone is communed. Best practice is simply for the pastor to consume everything, uh, so that we're faithful to the sacramental command of take, eat, take, and drink. Uh, anytime elements are reserved, needless questions will always arise. 
and even new needless and impious practices will undoubtedly arise from those questions. So uh, in the case of shut-ins or hospital calls, elements can always be consecrated in the member's home uh, or in the hospital at the bedside, uh, because when the pastor is with such members of his flock, that is simply a manifestation of the parish in that place. Uh, there is simply no need whatsoever to reserve elements. And like we said, it only leads to uh, unnecessary questions and then bad practices. Thanks for the question. We'll see you next time on ATP.